Hey everyone, Dan Takashi here. Today is September 10th, 1.40 p.m. Japan time. As usual today, I want to report to you the world news. Every day I try to summarize in about a 10-minute YouTube video all the important things that I think have happened across the world in the last 24 hours, so you don't have to read the papers if you don't want to. For those of you who are new to my channel, my name is Dan. I'm a former Wall Street guy, traveled the world a bunch of different places, got tired of traveling, <laughs> at least temporarily, and came back to Tokyo, Japan, where I was born. I was raised mostly in the U.S., but born in in Tokyo just started this YouTube channel that you're watching right now the English version two and a half months ago and started the Japanese version uh, in January that has a bit more subscribers so would very much appreciate if you subscribe to this English channel going forward and follow me I would appreciate your support as usual today I'm gonna first start with a quick glance at global stock markets it's, it's important first start with the markets global stock markets take into account all types of news so look at that look at the numbers see what happened then go into economic news society data political data and then at the very end i'll give you my opinion on what i think is the most important news of the day as well as answer some questions from the uh, audience from the youtube chat so let's get started here first and foremost what happened today in global stock markets uh, global stock markets again having a big move today for september 9th u.s time we saw the dow jones today was up 1.6 percent the s p 500 was up 2.01 percent the nasdaq tech composite was up 2.71 percent Looking at TSX Canada, it was also up 1.76%. Moving on to Europe, this is again for September 9th. The Euro stocks 50 today, also big move, 1.76%. FTSE 100 UK up 1.39%. DAX Germany up 2.07%. CAC France up 1.4%. IBEX Spain up 0.95%. Looking at Asia, this is again now for September 10th. Uh, Nikkei 225 is up today 0.66%. Topix is up 0.84%. Hansen Hong Kong up 0.04%. CSI China up 0.82%. ASX Australia up 0.1%. Uh, this is actually this data is from yesterday for MSCI Asia. This is old. So overall today, markets today are up nicely. We're having a big swing up day, uh, sort of recovering from the last two days of uh, crashing markets across the world, especially U.S. markets. It's interesting to note that today this move again was led by the Nasdaq. The Nasdaq, the tech composite, has been leading the global markets down for the last few days, and now it's leading today. The global markets up today. So very interesting to see. Uh, we will see what happens going forward next. Next. Now let's actually move on to uh, economic news of the day. Economic news to the today. Uh, first, the headlines are talking about how global stock markets across the world are having a large, uh, big recovery today. Also, a lot of investors are awaiting the outcome of the ECB, the European Central Bank's policy meeting, later on coming out today during uh, Asia and European time. Uh, I believe this is going to be out on September 10th, uh, European time. Now, uh, also looking at other types of data today in Japan, machinery orders rebounded in July. Uh, they combined uh, machinery orders in Japan, excluding volatile orders, uh, climbed 6.3% in July on a seasonally adjusted basis after dropping 7.6% in June. Uh, this was a overall pretty good report uh, showing that even though this is a very volatile number it goes up and down every single month at least showing that for july this is a pretty good number in canada we've seen the bank of canada the central bank of canada kept its benchmark interest rate steady at the effective lower bound of 0.25 percent in september and this is completely widely expected so i don't think it's actually that big of a deal uh, otherwise we're seeing in indonesia the rupiah hits uh the rupiah is the uh, currency of the indonesia hits three month low as jakarta to reimpose virus curve I thought this may happen. I have a lot of friends who live in Jakarta and people have been talking about this. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Jakarta has uh, reimposed their uh, wide scale social restrictions starting from September 14th, as there's been a sharp rise in coronavirus infections uh, throughout the metropolitan area. And as a result, the currency has fallen to 14,880 versus the US dollar. Uh, and all, last but not least, in U.S., we saw mortgage applications in the United States increase 2.9% in the week ended September 4. This is the first time rising in four weeks, uh, noting again that I think we're seeing perhaps a new rise, a new round of buying of homes uh, going on is usually mortgage applications go on with buying homes in the U.S. 
So overall, that's the biggest economic news on the day. Let's now move on to society data. First and foremost, I want to do a quick glance at worldwide coronavirus daily new cases reported today. Big jump we saw for September 9th, 286,548. I still think that this is due to the weekend effect that I keep talking about as Saturday, Sunday uh, usually gets reported out Monday and Tuesday as the data is delayed. The amount of testing, the amount of reporting is low. And then once we go into the middle of the week, the testing and the reporting starts to increase throughout the world. World. So this is quite a big jump. And this is sort of corroborated because the daily number of deaths jumped at the same time. It's to me, it's impossible that the daily number of cases and deaths jump exactly at the same time, unless it has to do with the actual testing and reporting, because just because you get confirmed with coronavirus, that doesn't mean you die immediately uh, for the most part. So daily new number of deaths today also jumped to 6,227 for September 7th. Big jump today. Let's continue to see how this moves for the medium term. For globally, we see uh, U.S. today reported 35,000 new cases. India, big jump, close to 96,000 cases. Holy cow, crap, man. So this is getting close to 100,000 cases. This is definitely now number two. This might even pass the U.S. to become number one if it continues on this path. Brazil reported today 34,000. And the rest of the world, Argentina, 12,000. Uh, Peru, about 6,000. Mexico and Russia, about 5,000. Colombia, about 7,000. So worldwide, again, the biggest uh, number increase is coming from India, Brazil and US are starting to see, I think, a bit of a stabilization here. Now, even in the middle of the week, no more weekend effect. The cases are still much lower than they were about a month ago. So I think we're seeing stabilization. It's mainly India that's just going holy cow and rising still very fast. In other types of news today, uh, CNBC had lots of reports about how China, there's a real danger of China developing separate systems from the rest of the world, uh, especially in terms of technology. Uh, in relating to that, China's Baidu is in talks to raise up to two billion U.S. dollars to launch a, a standalone biotech company. I think more and more, uh, this is actually getting promulgated by the Chinese government and also the Chinese business right now. Uh, there is definitely sort of a uh, back not backlash there's definitely sort of a tension going on right now not just from the u.s side towards china but also on the chinese side towards the u.s using u.s technology don't want to be relying on u.s technology so uh the chinese side is coming up with more and more individual uh sort of uh, separate systems from the rest of the world for both science and technology in the Wall Street Journal, top headline reporting about how TikTok owner uh, U.S. examined options to size up a full scale. ByteDance, the video sharing app's Chinese parent company, the parent company of U.S. TikTok, is in talks with officials over possible arrangements that would avert a full scale TikTok U.S. operations, uh, a sale of the operation. So uh, U.S. TikTok, a lot of companies were in sort of vie to vying to sort of buying this, including from what I remember, Oracle, uh, Twitter. Uh, Microsoft, tons of companies were looking at this, but ByteDance is the Chinese parent company owner. It looks like that they may come to sort of terms so that this it will actually will not be sold. Uh, in The Economist, again, this is reporting news, sort of similar to yesterday, how uh, this is a little bit of a critical commentary on how Boris Johnson's readiness to break the treaty on Brexit regarding uh, trying to change part of the treaty on Northern Ireland and the customs arrangement uh, is a negotiating tactic is both foolish and dangerous, uh, trying to flout its international law and presence at the moment. In terms of other political news today, uh, very interestingly, uh, Trump had a big round of interviews with uh, somebody called Bob Woodward. Now, Bob Woodward, for those of you who are not familiar with Bob Woodward, he was actually involved. He was one of the main journalists in the Watergate scandal. That's right, with Richard Nixon in 1971, I believe, 1972, during the 70s. And Trump uh, trying to sort of get uh, more uh, election momentum going on, decided to take an interview with Bob Woodward, a very uh, dangerous bet, in my opinion, very ballsy bet. So I kind of commend him on that. Uh, so he sort of bulldozed through 18 interviews over nine hours, which is insanity craziness. Uh, but it looks like the interviews may have cost him. As from right now, some of the transcripts and recordings are getting released. And it seems that some of the uh, words that are being played out are saying that uh, Trump was saying that he was playing down the virus. Um, it was more deadly than a flu. I still like playing it down because I don't want to create a panic. It looks like some of these comments are going to be coming out. And this may actually be costly uh, for Trump. So we shall see how this happens. Uh, you know, we're seeing CNN really, really attacking him. Uh, so we'll see how this key keeps getting played out. 
In terms of BBC top headline news today, uh, we'll see wildlife and catastrophe decline report reports. Uh, again, just talking about how right now uh, worldwide there's a lot of focus on coronavirus, China, presidential elections, stock market, etc. But please do note that wildlife populations have fallen by more than two thirds in less than 50 years, according to a major report by a uh, conservation group called WWF. So please do note that wildlife in terms of living planet index we're really, really having gone down over the last 50, 60 years. And this is still a large problem uh, for the future of our planet. So guys, that's the biggest piece of news today. Uh, in my opinion, uh, what I think is the most important for you to remember, number one, take a look at the stock markets today. This is quite a big move up. The NASDAQ up 3% today. Uh, the other day it was down 4 or 5%. Uh, it's been sort of crashing. It crashed about 11% just in three days. And today it's up 2.7%. Uh, so we don't know if this is called a dead cat bounce. Dead cat bounce basically means when the market crashes and then it bounces one day, but it's just sort of a temporary bounce and then it may just go back down. So it's sort of a uh, a weak bounce. So we don't know yet this is a dead cat bounce yet or not, but please keep an eye on the markets. Please keep an eye on oil, uh, tech stocks, uh, Tesla, SoftBank, etc. Please watch my previous videos for my analysis on that. Also, the other important news that I thought today was this political headline regarding Trump and Bob Woodward. This is going to be a very big interview, uh, probably a very big journal article that comes out. Bob Woodward's a very, very famous man, uh, you know, taking down the Nixon uh, administration with uh, the, I believe it was the Washington Post and the Watergate scandal. So uh, this is going to be a very big political movement. Uh, this, we're only, from what I understand, uh, ch ch about two months to until the election. So this is a very big gamble. And I think that this is something to focus on how this plays out throughout the next few months or so. So guys, that's the biggest news in the day. Uh, please subscribe to my channel below. Would very much appreciate your support. Would also appreciate if you send out my channel link to any of your friends and buddies uh, to sort of recommend my channel. In terms of lots of comments and questions from the audience that I got, uh, lots of questions right now about the market right now because the market's moving all over the place. Uh, people are asking me for updates on the US banks, about the Japanese banks. Uh, also asking me for updates on the US airline stocks. Everything's sort of moving all over the place right now. Uh, guys, I would highly recommend that right now you also watch my oil video on correlation right now is a very important time to watch this video to understand because sometimes some securities they will move together and sometimes they move, sort of move together and sometimes they move the opposite and sort of historically this changes so right now things are not very highly correlated which is interesting especially the airline sector is not really moving with the overall market uh very interestingly right now uh, also in terms of the currency markets the currency markets are sort of moving all over the place as well not very correlated so this is sort of interesting to see i'm going to continue to do updated videos on this one by one uh so please let me know if there are topics that you really want to hear please try to thumb up uh you know try to like other people's questions or please ask the questions in the comments section and i will fit it into the program thanks so much guys for watching today's video i very much appreciate your support adios amigos sampai jumpa